Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Priscilla and on this channel, I like to talk about my passions, which are art and, and fashion. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be discussing a brand that is top 10 favorite brands of all time. Maybe top five, but definitely top 10. And that is Wales Bonner. Wales Bonner is the name, fashion is the game. Now, I know that, or for me, it's imperative when talking about any brand or pieces from any brand that you should understand a bit of history from the brand, a little bit of an overview. So I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of what Wells Bonner is about. Wells Bonner is the eponymous label of Grace Wells Bonner, who was born to a black Jamaican father and a white British mother. It's relevant. Just give me a minute and I'll explain why. But she grew up in London, which is a multicultural city. You have people from different ethnicities, different backgrounds, all in this melting pot. Um, she went to CSM, which is Central St. Martin. It's a very prestigious school in London. It's had the likes of John Galliano as a student, Alexander McQueen, as well as a lot of different people in the fashion industries that are superstars. And by superstars, I mean very creative, very talented, very hardworking people. After graduating from CSM, she has gotten a lot of different accolades, and that includes the LVMH Prize. She's been invited to collaborate with Dior and a specific look, but what she is most well known for are her Adidas collaboration. That's actually how I was introduced to the brand. Um, I learned about the collaboration, I loved it so much, I purchased into it, I then learned about her brand and now I'm a fan. I am a fan of her brand. But to me, what I most love about her brand are two things and that is number one, the identity. I was speaking about her parents a little bit earlier and she pulls from her heritage to create the foundation of her brand. From the British side, she pulls tailoring. Think of Salvo Row, tailored to perfection, intended to look a specific way and made to perfection. And then from her father's side, which is Jamaican, but Caribbean, um, she pulls the fun color palette, the reds, the greens, the yellows, the black, and then she pulls certain fabrications. There's a lot of crocheting, there's a lot of cotton, there's a lot of like net kind of weaving as well. And I think this works so perfectly together because it kind of juxtaposes each other. One is very specific, very tailored, a little bit stoic when I think of a tailored suit. It's like made to precision. And then the other is so casual. When you think of the islands, it's like just fun, playful, light. And I think it works beautifully together. And I love it because I relate to the brand identity as I am Jamaican. Um, I love the colors that she used. And as someone who is very passionate about neutral, I love that she can get me into colors. Another reason why I really love her brand is how she begins each collection. Now, a lot of different brands and a lot of different houses, they may begin by doing research. From WGSN, they can see what the popular colors for the upcoming seasons are going to be, or the silhouettes as well. But for her, it's all about an experience. And that experience might come from traveling to India and seeing how people are living that way, and then traveling to Africa and meeting with different tribes and seeing how people navigate different lifestyles. Um, she uses all these experiences as well as readings. She reads a lot of literature from the likes of James Baldwin and then poems as well. She collaborates with a lot of different artists and that's um, artists of my minorities, so ethnic groups. And she uses all this artistry and literature and that's the foundation of how she approaches a new collection and she interprets it in her own way and she shows representation of the people that she is pulling from as well. She also uses a lot of United States like Ivy League school, collegiate, um, preppy kind of looks as well, which I 
I'm very much a fan of. I, I, I just love all of it. Um, I like how she works. I like how she thinks. I like that her brand feels intellectual. I like that there's a story behind it. Of course, there are brands where they create beautiful pieces. There's nothing behind it, but the piece is beautiful. And I love that as well. But I have an appreciation for, for her because of her background and how she designs. Oh, also one thing to note is that she collaborated with Carrie James Marshall, who is actually one of my favorite artists because I am an art museum fanatic. And my first experience of his was at MoCA, which is the Museum of Contemporary Arts in Los Angeles. He had an um, exhibition when I was a teenager and I went and I, I just fell in love with his work because I always go to museums and the faces that I see in the paintings and the imagery, it's not reflective of who I am, my ethnic background, anything at all. Of course, they're masterpieces, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, all of that but it's something very powerful about looking at something, a work of art and seeing a reflection of yourself in it in some capacity. I, I was so emotional, um, it was so beautiful and I'm very glad that she collaborated with this specific artist. Now what this video is really about is a sample sale and how I heard of the sample sale is Tuba Avalon. If you do not know who that is, you should because she is amazing. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. I think she's actually my favorite YouTuber right now because of her content. Now I watch a lot of female YouTubers in the luxury space and what I really like about her is that she is more critical and she's more analytical about collections. Um, I watch a lot of women and it's just a lot of hauls which is good and well because I like seeing the quality of things. I like to see how pieces fit but sometimes a lot of times there's no substance behind it and I like that she understands um, the history of the brand, what the brand is all about and she relays that to her audience as well. And why she does, she does participate in creating hauls. I feel like they're very intentional and not every video is a haul and her haul specifically represents her style. And I love her haul because she likes a lot of the same brands that I do and I want all the pieces as well. But I also love that she promotes being an individual and having an individual style. I know and you know that we're all individual people, but people forget that and they tend to follow the mass and trends allow you to, you know, be a part of this thing where you kind of all do the same Thing. but the thing is that it may not work out for you and it may not feel like it's you but you're gonna follow it because the masses are and I like promoting the idea of looking inwardly looking at yourself and figuring out what do you like what works with your body type because yeah you can go on Pinterest and you can save a bunch of photos and the girls they all look amazing and they're wearing these fancy pieces but then when you relate it to yourself your body you may not look the same you may not feel the same you not you may not feel confident in a in a piece that has a bunch of cutouts and everything's on display but maybe you feel confident in something that's very oversized that's like japanese inspired so it's best to kind of look inwardly and figure out who you are, what your style is all about, to create your specific style language. Okay, so another thing is that she has a Discord channel, and I'm a part of that as well. There's a lot of different people, a lot of cool people who post information about brands that you may not have ever heard about, or brands that um, you know about, but information you may not have heard about. And then they post um, scanned documents, they post different resources where you can learn about different brands. They also try to figure out ways that maybe a designer created this specific texture or material. It's pretty cool. Um, they post daily looks as well. I've posted a daily look before once or twice and other people showcase their styles and a lot of people have really great style and some people have exceptional, exceptional style. So it's really cool. Um, another thing is that they post sales. She actually posted about the sample sale. And when she posted that, I was like, wow, the heavens are really shining down on me because we don't get sample sales like that. In Los Angeles, no. We get reformation and we get 
called Gaia. And that's no shade to any of those brands because I bought pieces from those brands, but it's definitely the epitome of California fashion. So Wells Bonner, that's like something that New York would get, not California. And so since I knew there was going to be a sample sale, I'm like, I'm being blessed with this opportunity. Who am I to say no? So I went. And that specific weekend, I was actually busy, but I decided to go on a Sunday because I learned from a sample sale that I've been to and also watching New Yorkers, they go to sample sales. They have sample sales all the time. And from what I gather, they go to sample sales and it can get very hectic, like 2012 Black Friday kind of hectic. Like the release of a new iPhone, that's like 95% the same as the previous iPhone kind of hectic. And I was like, okay, Sunday, most people like to sleep in. They partied on Saturday. I don't party, so I'm going to be up bright and early, and I'm going to go down there. So on my drive, I'm going to LA, hands on tens and two. I'm thinking, Lord, please don't let this line be super long because I can probably only spend an hour, maybe an hour and a half there. And when I get there, first it's in the artsy part of LA, so the part that's not as scary as some parts of downtown LA. And I get to park about half a block away from the venue and I'm like, okay, this is looking good so far. I walk up to the space and there's a doorman. He opens the door and the ambiance is actually amazing so i walk in and they're playing like afro neo soul alternative music think of frank um ocean solange people like that and then all the workers they're all wearing wells bonner they have the track suits they have the t-shirts they have the trousers but what no one had which i really wanted to see which is a unicorn item to me are the blazers the coats those are so beautiful she includes like different details like cow shells and different beads embroidery and they look so magnificent online but i've never seen them in person before and i would have loved to see it but they didn't have any everyone looked amazing there was actually this girl who had the most chic hairstyle the bob she had a bob and it just curved around her face and it was blunt and then she had the matching tracksuit on she looked phenomenal. The space was beautiful. It was actually quite a small space, which I appreciated because it was well curated and it was clean. And you can walk through it in probably 20 minutes and look at all the pieces. Um, so ambiance was great. Um, I started looking around at the different pieces. And one thing to note about me is that, you know, some people... They, they, they have habits, and their habits include maybe drinking certain beverages or monetary wagers. Mine is creating well-curated wish lists of things that I would like to acquire over time. And I update them often. Um, and with these lists, I'm looking at them all the time, so it's like embedded into my brain. And I start to look around. And I'm seeing all the pieces that I previously missed out on. And I'm like, wow, this is even better than the first time. Because it's not being shipped to me. I can actually try the pieces on here. And then figure out if I really like them and if I want to purchase them. So, my goal, I was going to walk around, grab the pieces, try them on, and that's it. I walk around, look at all the pieces. None in my size. Not a single one. It was all medium and large. So I'm assuming that everyone got the extra smalls and smalls on Saturday when it was probably more busy. And I was like, not only did I lose out once, but I lost out twice on these pieces. I wasn't too disappointed though. I started looking around again and I start to see different pieces that I didn't see before. And I'm like, huh, I thought I have scoured her inventory. How did these pieces miss me? And so I go around, I grab the pieces that I like, probably about three or four that I really liked, and I take them to a corner. Another thing to note with sample sales is that there are no fitting rooms. So you are trying on everything in front of everyone. And the bad thing about that is that you can try something on, and like people may say like, oh, you should get that item, it was made for you, or oh, oh my gosh, you look so great, get it. And it's not, it's not conducive to my pockets because I am not made of money. 
I'm made of nitrogen, I'm made of carbon, I'm made of Hachito chemicals, but not money. So I had to narrow things down to two very competitive fighters. I had two pieces that I really loved how they fit on me. One was a neutral, one was colorful, one was a short, one was a skirt. They were both amazing pieces. It was baklava versus baklava. Baklava was gonna win. They were both winners. But the one that I chose was actually this piece. So this is actually the piece that I chose and it's a little bit blown out, but it's actually a culotte. So it's more of an extended um, shorts. Actually, it's very much a basketball shorts, in my opinion, the silhouette, but look at it. The rib on the waistband, it's so thick. And then it's this cream color and woven in are these tan lines, but look, the interior is predominantly this tan color and it's so beautiful. Now, what really pulled me to this item was one, it was neutral. So being that it's neutral, I figured that it can go with a lot of different things in my wardrobe. I love a neutral color palette. I just think it's easy and while I, lo I love her for color, this was just, amazing to me another thing is the fabrication now this is 87 percent cotton and 13 percent poly the other one was just made of viscose but i appreciated that this was cotton because i'm trying to stare myself into purchasing pieces that are made of natural materials so cotton silk linen and i know and wool as well and i know that you know every fabric has it's it's detriment to the environment but i'm trying to be better at how i consume and how i shop and i figured that this was the better choice now the viscose viscose is not a bad fabric it's actually a semi a semi um natural fabric because it's made of wood pulp which is a natural material but the process of creating the textile itself is chemically process so it's a semi synthetic fabrication um also the other piece was a skirt and i liked it so much because it gave me hips i have no hips i'm very much up and down and i try to find pieces that adds a little bit of volume to my shape and it just sucked me in and it gave me a little bit of hips but i figured that i've seen that kind of silhouette um time and time and time again in her collection so I figured that I would run into something very similar and I can have that in the future but the shorts I've never seen before so I thought that was the perfect fit for me I know you thought we were done but we're not done quite yet I did a little bit of a styling session because I wanted to see how the piece would work in my wardrobe and there were so many different options but I I styled it in two ways and I wanted to show you guys so first I styled it with this Wells Bonner turtleneck that I got um, a while back. It's very Harry Potter in its color palette, but I love it. It's a bit funky, it's a bit fun. Wear it with some, some tailored pants, um, a skirt. My new culotte shorts, um, I thought it was pretty cute. I'm wearing my McQueen rings and I would probably wear that with some mules, something easy um, in a neutral color. The second way I decided to style it was with an MM6 um, Mesa Margiela a bodice top. It's like more of a corset. It's of a cotton fabric, but it's coated. It's like a cotton canvas that's coated. I wore it with my Dries Van Noten bag, and I love that bag so much. It is definitely a winner in the closet because despite the fact that it's a cream, bag it doesn't get dirty at all it's also coated with something um and it's just easy to wear it's neutral it goes with everything and i would probably wear a neutral color shoe or a pop of color with it and yeah that's gonna be it that's all for the video i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned a little bit about wills bonner check out the website they have amazing things you can put it on your wish list wait until the sale go to a sample sale um the brand is amazing it's a smaller brand and i love to support first of all women second of all women of color 
and third of all just a great brand overall so i hope you enjoy hope you like comment and subscribe if you are compelled to do so and i'll see you in the next one bye I would like to show you my outfit. It is farm girl chic, but she's also going to a fancy dinner later on. Thrifted men's gap button down. The colors, they have like little speckles of color. You see, it's like blue, orange, red, pink, all of it. And then my skirt, my skirt, my skirt. It's made some Margiela and it's a flower and I love it. Okay, bye guys.